our podcast, Jesse has finally read Atomic Habits, which is my favorite book of the year so far. It's one I think about often and one I'll definitely read again. He's been taking the author James Clear's ideas about habits and applying them to budgeting, which has been really interesting. And as I've been listening, it got me thinking about how much I love to know what people are currently reading and people's favorite books. That's a question I had posed in the YNAB Book Club Slack channel and I was flooded with amazing responses more than I could ever read in a single summer, but I have narrowed it down and I have my official YNAB summer reading list. And I was so excited about the book choices that I wanted to share them with you today. Before I get into my teammates' recommendations, here's what I'm currently reading. I normally have two books going on at the same time, a fiction and a nonfiction. For fiction, over the weekend, I started The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This book I've seen everywhere with amazing reviews. It tells the story of two identical sisters who run away from their small black town when they're 16. They live very separate lives, but something in adulthood brings them back together. And I love a family drama, especially if it involves sisters. And so far the writing has been beautiful. For nonfiction, I have Make Time, How to Focus on What Matters Every Day. I always know when a book, a nonfiction book, is good when I pull out my page flags and I've already marked this one up a ton. It has me wanting to delete social media off my phone and be a lot more intentional with my calendar. Book number one comes from Aaron. Never in all my years have I seen someone so enthusiastically recommend a book. This is Kathleen Flynn's The Kitchen Counter Cooking School. This is how Aaron described it to me. The author went to a prestigious culinary school, but after graduation had no idea what she wanted to do with her life. One day she finds herself wandering the aisles of a grocery store where she becomes entranced by a woman filling up her cart only with boxed items, nothing fresh at all. Kathleen strikes up a conversation with the woman and finds out that she wants to be a good cook, but thinks she has no cooking know-how. So this book is meant to boost culinary self-confidence and Erin said it's full of ways to stretch your grocery budget and learn how to make delicious food at home. Michelle recommended When Sadness is at Your Door. She said this is a sweet kids book that talks about what we can do when we're sad. It's serious but uplifting and could be extra appropriate right now. From Ryan and Cody, I have Range, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World. I've always heard the phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. That made sense to me. If you wanna be good at a specific thing, you focus all your energy into honing that one skill. This book says though that it's people with diverse hobbies, broad interest, and those that took their time finding their area of focus that are better at making connections, solving problems creatively, and are thus more successful. I was talking about this video with Jeremy. I talk about books a lot, so I thought he was politely listening. But a couple days later, he came to me and said, I've been thinking about that book and I always thought if I wanted to take more classes, I needed to double down on something in my field. But really, I have an interest in languages, so maybe I could study that instead. That to me is awesome because at least in my own life, something I don't wanna lose as I get older is curiosity. So I'm going to read this and hopefully broaden my own horizons. This recommendation comes from Catherine. I'm gonna read what she says. For kids and honestly adults too, I think I love them as much as my son did. The How to Train Your Dragon books are amazing and almost completely unrelated to the movies. Similar themes of being a hero in your own way, but otherwise very much their own thing. I loved these movies, but I'm not sure I knew they were based on books. So I'm looking forward to reading this, and after I'm done, I'm gonna pass it on to my nephew. In the five books that changed my life video, of course, the You Need a Budget book, and I also included a couple bonus personal finance books. I Will Teach You to Be Rich and The Simple Path to Wealth. I feel like those three books help me lay a solid foundation, but it's honestly a topic I enjoy reading and so I'm always looking for new books. No one in the Slack thread recommended anything related to money, probably because we talk about it a lot. But over on Instagram, I saw a YNAB user recommend Clever Girl Finance, ditch debt, save money, and build real wealth. On the back it says, Bola's book expertly demystifies handling your money, getting out of debt, and creating a sound financial future for yourself. I also followed their Instagram account. I'll put a link to it down below if you'd like to check it out. When I first skimmed the list, this is the book that jumped out to me and I knew I'd be reading. It's called Joyful, The Surprising Power of Ordinary Things to Create Extraordinary Happiness. This recommendation comes from Chrissy who said, I love the book Joyful and it feels super relevant to the world right now. 
We're often told by experts and minimalist YouTubers that we need to look inward to find joy. But what if we could craft our surroundings to be an easy way to access small amounts of joy every day? As I read the book summary, it reminded me of my friend Diana, who has the most incredible fuchsia pink kitchen. I'm sure some people wonder why, but she says, why not? Every time I step foot in there, it makes me happy and it boosts my creativity. So if random things I encounter every day have an effect on my mood, how can I use that to my benefit? Always love flowers, looking at them, taking pictures of them, but not so much the tending of them. After the move though, this book has got me thinking that maybe I should put some flowers out in the back deck to care for and enjoy. I think I'm jumping from one extreme to another because this next book doesn't sound exactly joyful, maybe powerful or intense. But one thing I've learned about my YNAB teammates, they love a sci-fi or fantasy novel. Could have done an entire video with just those recommendations, but I narrowed it down to one that came up a couple times. This is the fifth season, which is book one in the Broken Earth trilogy. Elena says this is the greatest fantasy series she's ever read. A lot of reviews I read focus on the writing, how unique and powerful it is, and not so much on the storyline. My understanding is it's dark, the planet is unstable, and natural disasters wipe out huge portions of the population. And it focuses on how people, one woman in particular, have to survive and rebuild. So it sounds pretty intense, but if you need a fantasy recommendation, there you go. I think this is enough to keep me busy for the rest of the summer and beyond. I hope you found something interesting in the lineup. I'd love to know what you're currently reading or your favorite book, so leave that in a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and we'll be back with more videos very soon. Peace.